load balancing, incoming requests in Nginx environment. We're gonna have a deep dive in all the methods of load balancing in Nginx and see them in action in Docker environment. So if you want to learn more, stick with me. Hello and what's up guys, welcome to the next video on my channel. I hope you're learning more day by day. And in this video, we're going to see how to configure Nginx to load balance the incoming requests among multiple upstream servers. We'll see the default method that is round robin and we'll also check other methods that comes with the Nginx free version. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So in a total overview of what load balancing is all about, as we can see in this picture, as always, we've got our clients that are making requests through the internet that is somehow routed to our infrastructure that is interfaced with a load balancer in front of our application servers over here. So what load balancer does is that it receives the requests from the clients and deciding by the load balancing algorithm, it will try to route the requests to the upstream servers. So as a result, we'll get more performance, our load will be balanced among different servers and also we can utilize more resources. Also, one of the approaches that we can get with the load balancers is that whenever one of our servers get down, the load balancer will detect that, for example, server A is down and then will route the request to only the server 2 or maybe some other servers that are serving our backend services that were acting as the backup servers will come into play and the load balancer will also route the request to those backup servers also. We'll get more into details and see how to implement this in Nginx environment in this video. So if I go to the official documentation page for the load balancing in Nginx website with this feature inside Nginx, we can load balance across multiple application instances for optimizing resource utilization, maximizing throughput, and reducing latency and lastly ensuring fault tolerance. So as it is stated over here, Nginx open source version supports four load balancing methods and also in Nginx plus we can have two more methods that we're not going to cover in this video. So the default method which is round robin. So in this method the requests are distributed evenly across the servers although we can define weights to route more requests to the upstream servers that we desire. So in order to start testing these methods, I'm going to switch to the VS code over here where I've got all the configurations, which I'll put to my GitHub repository. And of course you can find the link to the repository in the description section down below. So no worries about configurations, just let's focus on the implementation. So as you can see, I've got a docker compose file and an nginx.conf file. In my docker compose file, I've got three services acting as my upstream servers, which are actually an echo server that will just echo whatever request that it receives. So I've defined the same service two more times. If I want to compare this to real world examples, these are just backend services that are stateless by themselves. Maybe they depend on some stateful services, but naturally they are stateless themselves. So next I've got an Nginx service over here, which is using the Nginx's latest version and only one volume that is mounted to it, which is the dot slash nginx.com file, which we're going to see in a moment to the slash etc nginx nginx.com file inside the container. And over here I've got one port that is mapped to inside the container, which is exactly the port that I'll configure nginx to start listening on. Next over here I've got the nginx.com file, which is a very basic setup of the HTTP block over here. I've got an upstream block over here that I've named it backends, which has three servers inside it server 1, 2, and 3. So basically these are the network addresses that are reachable by this Nginx instance. So because 
I've defined these services inside the same Docker Compose file. Basically, Docker Compose will create a network and attach all these containers to the same network. So these services will be able to see each other and call themselves through their service names. So of course you can change this by the IP port of your services that are on different networks, but make sure that they are reachable by this Nginx instance. So I've got the same definition for the other two upstream servers. And over here, I've got a server block that is listening on port 9999 the exact same port that is exposed outside the container and only one simple location which is a slash which will be responsible for every request that will be received by this Nginx instance. So the very simple configuration inside this which is proxy pass to the HTTP the name of the upstream that I defined over here. So of course in real world, you might need to add some other configurations over here, like for example, setting the relevant headers and stuff. So in this setup for the demonstration purpose, I don't need them and I try to keep things as simple as possible. So as you can see in the upstream section, I haven't defined the method of the load balancing. So by default, Nginx will try to use the round robin. And also because I haven't defined the weight for each of the upstream servers, the default will be set to one and each of them will be receiving the incoming requests equally. So in order to test this, I'm going to switch to terminal. I'll hit LS to make sure I'm in the exact same directory that my Docker Compose and Nginx configuration file exists. So if I say Docker Compose up dash D, as you can see, it creates a network and for containers, one being Nginx and the others, the echo servers and attaching all the containers to the exact same default network that is created over here. So if I say docker compose ps, I should be able to see the containers that are created by this docker compose file. So here I can see that my Nginx container is up and the exact port that I defined is successfully mapped to the outside network. And I haven't mapped the ports of the echo servers to outside network because I don't want to reach them from the outside network and I want the echo servers to only be reachable by the Nginx service itself. So as you can see in the port section, there is nothing for the echo servers. So right now my containers are up and running and in order to see the logs that are received by the upstream servers, which in this case are the echo servers, I'm going to create three terminals and listen to each echo server's logs by hitting docker compose log dash f and the server name. So I'll hit enter in the first one, the second one and the third one. So by making use of the watch command, I'll try to make a request each second using curl to localhost port 9999, which is the port of the Nginx that is exposed outside. So if I hit enter and go to the terminals, as you can see, the requests are being equally distributed among each of my echo servers. So in order to test the fault tolerance, like for example, if I try to destroy one of my echo servers, so if I say docker rm-f to force the removal of container, and if I define the name of the third echo server, I'll hit enter and my container is destroyed. But if I go back to the terminal over here, I can see that each second I am getting the response from the remaining two upstream servers. So this is the very default setup of load balancing in Nginx. So I'll hit Ctrl C to exit the watch command. And if I go back to the documentation over here, I can see the other methods that I can define in the open source version. So the second method is the least connections. So a request is sent to the server with the least number of active connections, keeping in mind that the server weights are also considered. So next, 
we have the IP hash in this method the server to which a request is sent is determined from the client's IP address in this case either the first three octets of the IPv4 address or the whole IPv6 address are used to calculate the hash value so basically in this method it guarantees that the requests from the same address will go to the same server unless it is not available so as it is also stated over here this method is very useful for the cases that we want the requests of the same client route to the same upstream server that it might be required in some use cases so like for example suppose that we have a backend that is sensitive to the headers that are received from the requests or like for example it is sensitive to the session id and things like that using this method we can guarantee that the requests from the same headers value or same session id will always route to the same backend instance and as a result that backend service will be able to identify that client and as the next method we have the generic hash so the server to which a request is sent is determined from a user defined key which can be a text string variable or a combination so as we can see in this example the hash is defined by the dollar request uri so as the next two methods we have the least time and random which are only available in the nginx plus and we're not going to cover in this video but i'll leave the url for this documentation so if you want to learn more about these two methods you can find it also in the description section so next topic we have the server weights so suppose we have our upstream servers running on different servers with different resources and suppose the resources for one of our servers are distinguishably higher than our other servers so as a result we want more requests to be routed to that server so by using the weight configuration we can reach this approach so if i go to the configuration suppose the server one is the server that has more resources so if i say weight equals two and i don't define the weight for the other two servers so as a result the requests will be routed to server one two times more than to the other two servers so in order to test this if i go to terminal i'll say docker compose down and docker compose up dash t again so that my containers are restarted with the new configurations again if i use the watch command i'll try to make requests each second to nginx server so as a result you can see that my server one instance is getting two requests then the server two then the server three and again two requests for the server one one request to server two and so on so i can play with these numbers as my server resources set up again in order to utilize the most out of the available resources so as the next and the last point of this video i can set the backup configuration so the server that is marked as the backup will not receive any requests unless all the other servers are unavailable then it will receive all the requests so i'll go back to the vs code over here and i'll mark the server 3 as the backup again i'll restart the containers and as i expect i should receive two requests by server 1 one request by server 2 and none by server 3 unless i go ahead and remove the containers for the server 1 and 2 upstream servers so i'll open the logs for each upstream server and by using the watch command again as you can see my server one is receiving two requests then the server two receives a request and as you can see the server three as it is marked as the backup server is not receiving any requests at all so if i go ahead and remove the server one and also the server two so as you can see it takes a little for nginx to mark the server one and two as unavailable and then it just routes all the requests to the server three 
as we can see over here. So that's all about the load balancing in Nginx that I've got in this video. If you have any questions, any recommendations, just go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to watch other videos on this Nginx playlist where I've described about all other features that Nginx provides in its open source version. Also, if you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, I hope to see you in the next video.